Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, colleagues, for your attention. It seemed appropriate that on Equal Pay Day, talking about women and their pay, that you hear from a woman. Sadly, you have heard from this woman for the last 13 years. Uh, and if you haven't noticed to my colleagues, I'm getting a lot older, so I can't keep doing this. We need to really work on this. That does not deserve a round of applause. Uh, but indeed, in a very serious vein, I rise today, April the 12th, to speak on the issue of really what it's called, pay equity. This is National Equal Pay Day. You heard from my colleague from Philadelphia some of the statistics. We now know that as of now, the gap is 22 cents per hour. Women earn 22 cents less. That 22 cents sounds very small, but sadly it adds up over the course of a woman's working years. It is the impact of thousands of dollars in lost wages and salaries, all because the worker is female. Now that seems in this day and age, 2016, astonishing, and we all know it's incredibly unfair. It's important to note, Mr. Speaker. Representative, that, please suspend. Certainly. Members, uh, uh, prior to the break, we only have uh, two speakers left. Representative Watson is one of them. If we could, if everybody could please take their seats. Members, please take your seats, and I'd ask that you take any conversations to the uh, rooms offside the House floor. And uh, Representative Wheatley, you will follow Representative Watson. You were going to speak on a resolution, and I'll, I'll call you next. Representative Watson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is important to note that the wage gap persists at all levels of education. In 2011, the typical woman in the United States with a high school diploma working full time year round was paid only 74 cents for every dollar that was paid to her male counterpart. Among people with a bachelor's degree, the figure was also 74 cents. In fact, the typical woman who has received an associate's degree still isn't paid as much as a typical man who only graduated from high school. The inequities persist. Even though, as we said, that the gap in the wages is a small amount when you look at it per hour, it adds up over a career. A typical woman who worked full time year round should, would lose about $443 thousand dollars in a 40-year period due to the wage gap. A woman would have to work almost 12 years longer to make up that $443,000 gap. It's interesting to note that, as I said, I've been doing this for 13 years, but times have changed and for hopefully we're moving in the right direction. Because within the, fast, the past few weeks, the issue of pay equity hit the headlines not on the front page, not in a column, but on the sports pages, because five members of the U.S. women's national soccer team, including women who are indeed household names like Hope Solo, uh, filed a wage discrimination action against the U.S. Soccer Federation with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And despite claims from employers that money's just not there, well, the ample evidence proves otherwise, considering that the women's soccer team generated nearly $20 million more revenue last year than the men's team. But the women are paid one quarter of what the men receive. So I would suggest to you that this equal pay hits all levels, all levels of education, all levels of opportunity. So as we mark this year's Equal Pay Day, I want to remind everyone that the issue also crosses the political aisle, and it shouldn't be mired with other pay issues or anything. Fair pay for women not only helps provide better financial security for families of working women, but it also helps our bottom line, our meaning those who are legislators and those of us who are responsible with putting together a budget and spending the state taxpayer dollars. We've heard the saying that a rising tide lifts all boats, and when working women make as much as their male counterparts, they'll be further contributing to our, our commonwealth.
They'll pay more in income taxes, along with sales and use taxes. And ideally, they'll be less likely to rely on government programs and services for such items as health insurance or child care. And for those at the end of their career, the wage gap translates into less retirement savings. So indeed, with a better retirement, it means that seniors will not need all of the services that we currently provide. Paying women a fair wage or a salary for their work, it really is common sense. And I'm hopeful that in the near future, I certainly won't stand here, but we don't have to mark this state. Women are paid equally to men, and guess what? They all pay their taxes, and we're all for that. I know we are. So this is why we need to bring greater awareness to the issue on a day like today, and actually on every day, our jobs as lawmakers to ensure that the laws we have in place are appropriate to deal with pay equity issues. And if they're not, we'll study them, and then we'll fix them. Thank you, colleagues, for your indulgence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Representative.